Smile Foundation is a national level development organization reaching out to over 400,000 uh, beneficiaries across 29 states and uh, we work with uh, with more than 900 villages. How you empower them? Basically, you see, uh, we started with the concept uh, of education as the means as well as the end. But uh, while we worked on the ground, we realized that, uh, you know, without health, education cannot happen. So we started extending our thought from education to include health as a part of education. So after, while working on the ground, we realized also that uh, livelihood, that is one of the family member getting the consistent economic uh, support to the family would help the children to go to school. Along with that mother empowerment, that is empowering the mother to make the children go to school. Uh, so we created a concept on the basis of uh, what we call uh, life cycle approach. That is a child will go to school, the sibling will be walking in a place, the mother will be empowered and father will be the supporting figure in the whole. So we extended from children to children and family. Uh, we have our own employees across the country. So we have more than 460 employees. Uh, we work through 16 offices. But more than that, actually, we have 250 community-based organizations spread across the 29 states. And we work through the community-based organization. They are essentially the NGOs? Uh, they, you see, I will say them NGOs, actually, you know, I do not know the exact definition, but actually, I call them community-based organizations because they are the linkages of those organizations with the community. So we call them community-based organizations, on whom people actually, they trust that community-based organization. So we work with around 250 community-based organizations. Yeah. So they gave you the feedback and you do it? No, actually we work together with them to plan it, like, like a, yeah, plan the strategy and to see the need of the, you know, we try to find out from the ground what is the need uh, of the community. Uh, because as an organization, a, a mother development organization at a national level, what is our role? Our role is to see <coughs> what is the necessity of the community for which they are suffering actually. What is their actually, what is the gap? There is a government who, which provides the, you know, social <coughs> need of a community. But there is a gap actually. Either the community is not aware of it or the the government system is somehow we no, not able to bridge the gap. What we say that we as an organization try to model certain things. To give an example is that there is a static hospital uh, which is serving the population of about 70 villages. Now the thing is that one static hospital is not able to serve with a minimum doctors and not able to serve. Now we modeled a mobile hospital program which connects the static hospital as well as the it, under a roster scheme it actually traveled to 20 villages on that and we privately through the csr funding we fund that uh, get the mobile hospital okay. funded and what we learn actually we go back and try to replicate and try to represent it before the right kind of uh, policy making you see a static hospital should be supported by mobile hospitals now the thing, this is a learning as a no, development organization because we do not have a way either to solve all the problems of the society but we can model it and go back and give it back and do the complementary uh, uh, as a complementary agency to the we're into education healthcare livelihood and women empowerment we are into all the four okay. how you support that uh, that's, what, that's what I'm telling you. Actually, we have a concept called life cycle approach. So when we started working on the ground, what we realized that you know a child is not going to school like as an <coughs> you know middle class uh, people who are uh, empowered through education. We know that education is the means as well as the end. But when we started working on the ground, we found that you know education that is an ideal way of thinking. Yes, education is the most um, most uh, powerful empowerment too. But how a child, if the family, one of the family member is not well, a child will not go to school. 
we started realizing that ki unless the family's health is taken care so we we felt that health is a part of education if the health is not taken care then education will not happen are you getting my point so then we started also another important aspect what we realized is the uh, economic capabilities of the family why children go to work they go to work because there is a necessity of the you know they don't get two times food the children have to work they are interested nobody wants to send his child to work actually but the problem is that it is again a ideal thought it should be but the problem is the real ground reality is that ki they have no option but to send some children to work so can you create an informal environment in which the child may not work but how you create a balance between and so concentrating on one of the elder sibling getting a job so we created a program and you know we started you know, putting that one of the family member is getting a consistent income whether the father or whether the uh, one of the elder sibling so we created the livelihood program then also another thing we realized is the empowering the mothers more than women empowerment uh, it is mothers empowerment if the mothers are empowered children will go to school in the underprivileged community if fathers are empowered they their priority will be there to to Correct. raise you know, resources for the family and there is a necessity yeah. actually yeah. so mother will always ensure a child should go to school irrespective of whether whatever may be their economic situation so from we started with children and uh, education but we realized that it cannot be children and education it will be children and family with education livelihood and mother empowerment how you do uh, i'll tell you uh, smiles 95% funding is from corporates and uh, we work with government but we have not taken funds from government actually till this moment corporate is support is our major huh, our model has been from the day one is a corporate fund and model uh, and it is a very intensely we did it because you know one of the nomenclature in the world if you analyze and see uh, one thing we should learn from the corporate world is the <coughs> uh, return based objective based approach you see there's the most efficient way of realizing uh, the potential of any resource you know the optimum utilization of resources that is the we should learn from any nomenclature is corporates right so from the day one our model was that let us learn the most difficult way you know if you can actually uh, if you can develop a model if you can satisfy a corporate then you can satisfy any other nomen Of course, the earlier what was happening, earlier you know CSR was not taken as an, uh, uh, not taken uh, seriously, as, not taken as seriously because you know uh, if since you know the corporates were, I'm not saying not taken seriously, but you see earlier they were concentrating on quality delivery, quality product services delivery to the customer was the first priority. Then it came employees. but today if you look at it and analyze the situation quality is was a privilege 20 years before if any organization is call, giving quality then it was a privilege to the customer but today quality is a part of the product every product if you take up any even what a rickshaw rich, puller the mobile he is using is of quality even you go to the the you no know, bad quality is not a no bad quality cannot compete you have to start the business actually now with the lower price and quality has is a very you know quality you have to achieve first quality you cannot compare the quality is not a distinctive factor for growing of a business so then it got got into your employee base to you know make taking care of your employee to deliver that is empowering for the second part it came i got it. but gradually it has come that your distinctive factor are you like it is in the developed world it was there 20 years before also that are you a socially responsible organization it was not there in india of late in last uh, one decade and last 5 years particularly last 3 years more intensely i can tell you we we are majorly working with the um, our larger section of the audience is the multinational corporation 
but also a lot of Indian good brands who believes in governance. You see, now CSR is is taken by them as a uh, also strategic investment for the brand. You know, ultimately uh, it is a brand sales. Yeah, you know about. Would it. you Don't like to name some brand? Corporate? Yeah, in India um, we start. Uh, you can take up Ericsson, uh, FIs. We talk. Uh, F FIs is an, you know, one of the biggest financial institutions. Yeah. The uh, starting for in, in in there are so many Indian companies also like Indigo. If you look at the bigger brands, who are some or other way associated with all the any IT telecom companies. You said there, there, are, there are so many IT. There are so many. There are so yeah. the more, a lot of IT telecom companies. But you can name actually. We No, no, actually, you see, this is a uh, overall perception, but if you look at the organization who have the governance mechanism in place and who believes that, you know, it can actually enhance their brand and actually it can enhance, like, you know, they put a lot of efforts in retaining employees. Mm -hmm. I can tell you one thing, very important aspect, which I realized and after talking to a lot of corporate, it, they see it as a strategic investment. They, like people with one lakh employees, two lakh employees, level of companies are there now operating in India. A lot of Indian companies are also yeah. now it has become la that large. Uh, making their employees, because uh, if you see gradually the shift, people do not work only for money. Mm -hmm. That part is getting changed actually. Okay. People do not work only for money. They, mm -hmm. is the or organization is socially responsible, is the organization is, uh, is my organization is ethically governed. Mm -hmm. Uh, I hope that in that place actually they try that they want to satisfy their internal customer. Of course, external customer they want to show. Like you go to America, you see every product is associated with some kind of an cause or some kind of a, this thing. That is extended part of uh, uh, you know CSR. But every also showing them that I am a responsible organization towards the society has become a necessity of the corporates and multinational corporations are giving the uh, putting this you know when one organization start doing it the other organization have to do it because the customer is one challenge yeah, things are because the position in the market uh, will be different because i am getting everything same suppose i want to go buy an air conditioner no all the products have the same price range and same quality because that research has reached those levels and internet has given them so much of analytics, so much of rating. In product, you know, distinguishing uh, is competitive advantage through product and uh, product and services is not only. Then after that it comes that, you know, are you socially responsible? Are you an ethical brand? The, are, is, uh, do that organization treat their employees rightly? Do mm -hmm. the organization disclose the profit rightly? So, mm -hmm. CSR is a part of, you know, is a part of a strategic investment rather than and uh, we today we are talking about a uh, compulsion or an you know legislation based csr we have seen in last two three years but in case of smile there's never been a legislation based csr we have been following this model for last 15 years when there was no csr or all this thing in my personal opinion is that in future people will find more and more, you, are, you actually, when more and more governance will come into place, more and more uh, ethical way of business will be the part of life, when there will be more and more people joining and thinking that it is the right way of doing things, uh, there will be more and more uh, people will get engaged with the community development. So I think it will. it is only one you don't need a law to support it actually. Automatically, it will be a strategic investment for corporate. I, I, as I told you, you know, they, uh, you see... You what are the percentage of increment? Uh, exact percent, you see, it depends upon their actually... Pro requirement profitability. and product penetration and all. Profitability all depends. Profit, because CSR is an appropriation of profits. CSR hmm. is not actually an expenditure. Yes. So it is like uh, an investment, they have to invest it for the community. So I, I personally feel that you know the only, it is only one way uh, is that it will grow further. 
uh, and you remain competitive, competitive because you have to invest on corporate social responsibility and corporate social responsibility is defined across the board now and an organization has to be responsible in future. Actually, is a very, um, you see, when a Smile Foundation, this has make you more popular. No. <laughs> no. Um, you see, let me tell you how Smile works. Uh, a smile, one is our development work, what we do on the ground, that is the, as I mentioned to you, education, livelihood, uh, women empowerment and uh, uh, health is our portfolio. While we work on the ground uh, and do as the modeling, to support the government and all this thing we do. Simultaneously, we have a concept called civic driven change. We try to share what we do on the ground and try to sensitize the society. From school children till people who have retired, across the board we work with them through a sensitization drive, through various tools. Like for instance, we visit, we have 50 people who visit various schools and try to, as you are mentioning, we try to educate them on the value education like we have also team for colleges we have also team for corporate so we keep on doing this, this we call it social, social driven change what happened what would you realize is that you no know, if you see have you i hope you have seen the film i'm you see the film there was a privileged child so the film was also made by you yeah, yeah the film was produced by us oh okay yeah. so my foundation produced that film mm -hmm. so you are into film industry also I am not sure we are in pre pre film industry, but we used film, uh, that is what I am explaining okay, to you, okay. is that our sole aim is to talk about the uh, challenges of the community. That is, as I mentioned at the beginning, is that two child take birth at the same moment and one is privileged, one is underprivileged. And that underprivileged child has not done anything wrong, that it is sheer chance that you got birth to a doctor and he got birth to a or what would have happened had it, had it been exchanged? You would have been suffering for the same. So, sensitizing the privileged society is we have taken as a place that we will try to send what we are doing for the underprivileged will try to bring that inspiring story and try to make as much as people as much as possible people to reach out to tell them is that it, you are privileged to sensitize so that if if they get they get sensitize then in that case they they will suppose I, I sensitize you today and you go back and say that no, let me take care of my maid servant's uh, daughter to go to school so our job is our ma ma uh, model is working for the underprivileged and sensitizing the privileged this is the way we have actually created now how you sensitize the privileged they are the most educated uh, most well informed you have to use very creative tools to sensitize them. If I go and tell there are so many child labor, you are suffering and this, and that, you will not listen to me. That's all media channels are doing. So you have to do it through a very innovative uh, and uh, very creative way you have to present it. So I am Kalam is one part of that story is that we thought that cinema is, you know, we Indians are very fond of cinema. So let us tell our story what we do on the ground. If you see there is a privileged child, helping an underprivileged child. That is actually a real story of Swine Foundation. We work with privileged children and sensitize them before they start forming opinion that they are privileged. And we, we have a special program called Child for Child for that. And we child for? Child for Child. Uh -huh. underprivileged, we go and talk to privileged children in the school and tell to them is that how, how they, why they are privileged and how they are privileged and how there is a counterpart who is suffering on the ground. You must make some videos? We do everything. You, you can, all, you, you all can type, share something. Uh, all type of technical tools we... My last... <laughs> Basically, b working with people uh, and actually my uh, inspiring, uh, inspiring a group of people to uh, say that you know let get meaningfully engaged and positively engaged that we all smile and actually uh, uh, enable others to smile the people who are left out because of sheer uh, you know chance that why not we try and go back and tell to the world that actually it is not a very very after you know you are privileged and you should enjoy your privilege correct but uh, i feel personally is that 
without sacrificing anything suppose you are uh, you have got education you are empowered and you want to keep on doing that in 24 hours even if only 5 minutes you can take out you can actually change the lives of one child and if the privileged section of the society that is even if i say the 30% of indians are privileged today or 25% of indians are privileged today if all of them think we don't need anybody uh, from the world to come and help so they can take care of all rest of the people they are doing a uh, irrespective of their strategic investment as i mentioned they are doing a great at the end of that they are enabling and using their resources for the purpose from the society uh, they have created their own business and brand and actually a part of that uh, they are sharing with the right people who deserves to be helped thank you